recognize sometimes that we, um, in being in being in ministries and we're, we're in churches a lot of times, and how many realize that there's so many people that don't even understand what Pentecost is, or that they've never heard of it, and it's just it should be anyone that's a part of the body of Christ should know about Pentecost. I, I, I don't understand. It shouldn't be any uh, uh, divisions when it comes to Pentecost if we say that we're up under the flagship of uh, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 It does not matter if it's Protestant, Baptist, it doesn't matter. I can't hear anybody. Amen. If, uh, because it, it's, there's a significance in understanding Pentecost. Their significance in, in understanding. So we're gonna work on if you uh, uh, time permits. I, I'm just gonna. This is not one of those. I don't think that. Uh, uh, but we can, and you know, if we understood, we can. We can jump around because of the goodness of the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's always appropriate. Yes. Always. And it's never out of place, nor is it ever out of season. Amen. I can't hear nobody. Uh, okay, but I, um, for those of you, I'm not going to ask anybody to stand, but I'm going to ask you to uh, prepare in your reading uh, the book of Exodus, 19 chapter, the book of Jeremiah, 31st chapter, and of course, uh, well, Pastor, I thought you were talking about Pentecost. Well, I am talking about Pentecost, if you just permit me to do what I do, Amen. and you do what you do. Amen. I can feel people trying to push me into Acts, but Pentecost was long before the book of Acts. Amen. Mm. What are you talking about, I mean, if you will permit me? If you will permit me, um, because we must understand what Pentecost actually means. Pentecost means uh, 50. Uh, it's, it's defined uh, from the Greek word uh, Pentecosti, which means 50. Mm -hmm. And there were other names. It was also known as far as the Jews, uh, the festival festival uh, of weeks. Because everything took place, and you must understand, uh, days after, after Passover. Yes, sir. And that's how we got Pentecost, but you must understand Pentecost uh, has been around for a long time. But what? But but this is so awesome. Let me, let, Exodus, Exodus. Uh, I'm not, I don't want to spoil it for anybody. I gotta get you pull you all out of uh, X two because I feel you're stuck there. And <laughs> if I was trying to get me to go to X two because that's all, uh, I feel you're stuck there. But we're gonna try to pull you out. We're gonna try to pull you out. Okay, the book of Exodus, 19 chapter, first. Verse. And it reads as thus, in the third month after the children of Israel had gone out of the land of Egypt, on that same day they came to the wilderness of Sinai. Now I'm going to move around. Now I'm still in uh, the book of uh, Exodus. And I'm going to uh, 16. Then it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were there were thunderings and lightnings and a thick cloud on the mountain. And the sound of the trumpet was very loud, so that all the people who were in the camp trembled and mowed the people out of the camp to meet with God. And they stood at the foot of the mountain. Now Mount Sinai was completely in smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire. Its smoke ascended like the smoke of a furnace. And the whole mountain quaked greatly. My God. And when the blast of the trumpet sounded long and became louder and louder, Moses spoke, and God answered him by voice. Then the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai on top of the mountain. And the Lord called Moses to the top of the mountain, and Moses went up. 23, but Moses said to the Lord, the people cannot come up to Mount Sinai, for you warned us, saying, set bounds around the mountain and consecrate it. Jesus. Then the Lord said to him, away, get down, and then come up, and you and Aaron with you, 20, 
And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of, out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Jeremiah. Jeremiah, 31st chapter. Thirty-first verse. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I have made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant which they broke. Though a husband to them, says the Lord, but this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days says the Lord, I will put my law in their minds my God. and write it on their hearts and I will make and I will be their God and they will, shall be my people. Uh -huh. No more shall, shall ever man teach his neighbor and every man his brother saying, know the Lord for they all shall know me from the least of them to the greatest of them, says the Lord. Acts 1 and 4. Book of Acts. And the word reads as thus. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which uh -huh. he said, You have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? Listen, listen, listen. And he said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. Acts 2, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, yes, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Mm -hmm. That may not be too much for anybody, but for those that want to hear from the Lord. Amen. Truth, Pastor. Open up thy ears that they may hear what thus says the Lord. Uh, for those that need a subject matter, Pentecost's purpose, the Old and New Testament, uh, it's so awesome because it's amazing because we 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 we're we're, we're in a dispensation now and we have been taught. Uh, and it's amazing about Pentecost and the only thing that we can uh, recall the recollection is uh, in the book of Acts that where they were all on one accord on one mindset. Uh, I can't hear nobody, and then suddenly, hallelujah, uh, uh, tongues of fire began to come upon their heads and. Uh, then they were down, be down, they were doused with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak in tongues in different languages. Hallelujah! Uh -huh. That that uh, they could understand what their brother was saying. That they knew they was from a foreign land. Uh -huh. But how many realized that God had put forth a purpose before uh, Pentecost on the upper room? And I began to ask the Lord. He said, "Well, you must understand and tell my people the reason why, because you must Jesus. understand." Pentecost within itself has been around, but Pentecost beforehand was just the, uh, was considered the 50 days uh, after Passover, and sometimes it was because uh, to bring forth uh, uh, your first fruits and, and things of that nature, uh, but it was nothing to endow uh, any of God's creations with power. Amen. Uh, uh, amen. Uh -huh. Okay, Pastor, what are you saying? Well, well, Pentecost within itself, and you must stand. Uh, uh, Pentecost for the church was for a reason, just like Pentecost or Mount Sinai was for a reason. Yes, 
But but because of the thing, the thing of it is now we don't understand and the thing about because we don't understand, we don't know our history of Pentecost where where uh, it was the purpose was to endow uh, 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 the believer or to endow the ability for righteous living. Come on, sir. Amen. Well, what well, pastor, what are you talking about? Well, when well, you check back in the book of Exodus and uh, with the children of Israel, because you must understand they were down people. There was a people that thought that, well, uh, we don't know where our helpers going to come. And they were kind of, uh, uh, well, you know, uh, uh, depressed people, so to speak. Yeah. Because how many realize sometimes when you understand, when you think, when you know something of God, but you're not really sure of uh, who God is, so therefore God had to show himself for his people. Sure. Uh, I can't hear nobody, not only for his people, but to give them the ability, hallelujah, and the encouragement to say, hey, I am God, I am here with you, but in order to be able to get those things that I have and you've heard of me, there must be a requirement of you and from you. Come on! Amen. Uh, well, 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 Pastor, what he said, well, you must understand because uh, Pentecost and when it happened, you must understand if you trace, hallelujah, I can't hear nobody, if you trace when the Exodus, when the Israelites left Egypt, hallelujah, they left after Passover or right on Passover, they traveled, hallelujah, I can't hear nobody, for 40 days and they ended up at the bottom of Mount Sinai in the wilderness. Ten days after that, Moses went up on the mountain. I can't hear nobody. When Moses went up on the mountain, Moses came back down on the fifth day. Hallelujah. I can't hear nobody with the Ten Commandments. Well, Pastor, what do you say? Well, well, what, you, what we've been missing, what we've been missing, what happened in the uh, New Testament had already happened in the Old Testament. God set it up for a reason for his people. Uh, well, Pastor, what do you say? Well, what we must understand is because uh, the only way to have the effective work uh, uh, from Pentecost, from God to work, we have to be able to live a righteous living. God does not do anything for any of his people without the requirement that he has put. There are conditions that we must live by, but we have forgotten that thing. We we now where, where we are now today, uh, as far as Pentecost, it's more about the dress than it is the power. Because we have forgotten, though, it's not about what you got on. It's not about because you come up in white. Yeah, your outside may be white, but your heart is black. I can't hear nobody. But Pastor, what do you say? We make so much commercialism nowadays about Pentecost, but we do not understand the purpose why God allowed Pentecost to happen in the upper room for the church. That's about the church. That's right. Oh, now, 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 we may, we go back. We must go back now to to to, to, to we, we we know the story about Moses, but what we forgotten and the similarities because when you read and I'm just going to paraphrase when you read in in Exodus on Mount Sinai, what began to happen? Moses was up on the mountain. There was fire. I can't hear nobody. There was a burning bush. bush there was fire. I represented all oh, y'all out of my no seat. I can't hear nobody. But before there was fire, when they were going up on the mountain, they would begin thunderous sounds and noises that, ah, uh, I can't hear nobody. There was wind blowing up on top of the mountain. No one understood what was going on. I can't hear nobody. So, so, so God was setting these things up, but the people because did not understand what was going on. But, but the Holy Spirit began, and it did not happen. Hallelujah. It did not happen to Moses and God. God had to move a people from uh uh he had to move a people in between from the uh the Israelites who exited they exited out of Egypt. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. And you must understand there was significance. It was right after Passover or right on Passover when he allowed them to leave. Yes, sir. Okay, 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 understand now because uh, uh Pentecost is, was still at the, the Passover. And, and the difference is the Passover, at the Passover, they left and they traveled. Unbeknown to them, they traveled and they traveled. Uh, there was 40 days they were doing it, they were traveling, and they ended up again on Mount Sinai in the wilderness or what have you. Uh, and, and then they, they were just there at the bottom of the mountain. And then God had begun to speak to Moses. Moses went up on Mount Sinai, hallelujah. And during that transition, hallelujah, 
the transition, God was setting things up where they're saying, well, if you read, he said, well, if they would be my people, I would be their God. Yeah. Yes. So, 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 so before, and everything that the Lord said, and this is the Old Testament, but he was setting this up for the New Testament as well. Yes. The similarities, the similarities, so therefore we cannot excel, we cannot just jump on Acts 2 without even understanding what happened in the book of Exodus. Yes. Wow. Come on, sir. Because, because when you understand where your history is, when you understand, you have a great appreciation, yes. hallelujah, and you don't take it haphazard or you won't abuse it when it begins to happen. You you come with a, an expectancy. There is now a mandate, uh, uh, I believe, on God's people now because uh, uh, what they didn't have in the Old Testament, you have now in the ability oh, to allow the work through you. Yes. Come on, Pastor. Yes, yes sir. Jesus. But the problem is now, the problem is now, and uh, it, it's hard to get back over or, or where we're supposed to be because we don't understand because uh, we've just abused and we've taken it and we've turned it commercially. And, we, and, and it's like, no, we, 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 we're more uh, about what is uh, the, uh, uh, what, the mm, what you call the, 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 uh, uh, the resemblance or the, the past of what it was, uh -huh. and we don't appreciate for what it is now or what it should be. Yes, sir. We're we're going off of what it what, what it was in the past. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. But we bring nothing into the present or to the future. We're carrying on with something that was done before, but we're not doing anything yet. We're caught up on the tradition of Pentecost. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And not the purpose or the power of Pentecost. Come on, sir. Wow. Come on, Pastor. Because the thing, now the problem is because everybody wants to, we talk about Pentecost, Pentecost, rushing away is Pentecost, but, but there's no expectancy because Pentecost was a miracle. Oh, my God. I can't hear nobody. See, 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 Pentecost was a miracle because, well, Pastor, how is that a miracle? Well, well, when you, and then and, and the, another thing is it, there were 3,000, <laughs> there were 3,000, mm, when Moses came down, when Moses came down with the Ten Commandments, those did not appreciate and understand 3,000 died. Yes, sir. In the Old Testament, 3,000 died. Yes, in the New Testament, 3,000 gave their life over to Christ. That's right. Amen. What God took away, God replaced in the New Testament. Oh, I can't hear nobody. Read the Bible. Read it, read it, read it. So, 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 so God has a purpose. God has a purpose. Uh, so so he, he's, what, the appreciation of Pentecost has been lost in this dispensation. Because, because then what was done, what was done in the Old Testament to encourage the people, and it was encouragement through the Ten Commandments, this is what the Lord thy God has requirements for these, those on uh, uh, his people. My God. But what man cannot do in flesh, God said, well, I'm going to have to have a do-over in the New Testament. Yes. Okay. Okay. Oh, because it was hard, too hard for flesh to, uh, to uh, uh, attend and abide by, hallelujah, the, the Ten Commandments. But God had a purpose for the Ten Commandments to, to bring his people, the uh, Israelites, into righteous living. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because um, mm. what God did about, wrote on our hearts in the New Testament, he wrote on a tablet in the Old Testament by his finger. Oh. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. God was involved in everything that he from the Old Testament to the New Testament. It was still the Holy Spirit because it was God's finger that wrote on the tablet when he gave it to Moses. Now in the New Testament, I... The New Testament, it was a God doing the same writing, but because when the Holy Spirit came, he began to write on the hearts of those that believe. Because it was faith that brought us through that allowed the writing to appear upon your heart. You know, you're, come on now. Well, then he says that in the book of Jeremiah, because in the book of Jeremiah, it talks about what was going to happen in the book of Acts. But people miss that. Teach, Pastor. The book of Jeremiah. Huh? The book of Jeremiah began to set the set. Uh, mm, set the stage. Set the stage. Yes, sir. 
for what was going to happen. Uh, Pastor, what are you talking about? He said, behold, the days are coming. Uh -huh. Says I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. Uh, because the Ten Commandments didn't. Mm. I wrote the Ten Commandments, but they couldn't adhere to it. Yeah. All right. mm. I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers. That I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand. Uh, I took them by the hand and I led them out of Egypt. Come on! Come on. Come on. Mm. Yes. I took them by the hand and I led Egypt. So that's telling you that it was in the Old Testament. So he did do this. Uh, I will make the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law in their minds. Uh -huh. And write it on their hearts. Yes. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Yes. Yes. No more shall every man teach his neighbor. Uh -huh. So in the book of Jeremiah, it was setting this up for, for before Christ came on the scene, what was to take place. Yes. Prophecy was spoken. So it had to come to pass. Yes. And even in the book of Joel. Uh -huh. That's right. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, even in the book of Joel is telling what, what, what was going to happen. Yeah, but even then, even then, in the first chapter in the book of Acts, Jesus began to speak and say, hey, look at Listen. This is what's going to happen. Yeah. Where, but I'm going to have to leave because you must understand in order, uh, in order for you to receive and work effectively like I know that you can, I can't be here. Amen. Yes. 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 Amen. Yes. Because as long as I'm here and you see me, you won't do the potential that I know that's inside of you. You won't work, huh? You won't work what I know that you're able to do, but you'll rely on me. That's the truth. Wow. Yes, yes, yes. So he told them even before huh, they had an inkling of what was about to happen. Yes, yes, sir. So Jesus said, no, I'm going to have to make the extension. I'm going to have to leave. But even still, understand the Passover. Wow. Even still, understand it was after where we're, where we celebrate now. Uh, today is if you count seven weeks since Easter or since the Ascension, it would be fifty days. So the Passover would lead us fifty days after after the Ascension. Uh, to Pentecost. Right. But now now this Pentecost, now Pentecost is always happening after every Passover. There's after the 50th day, uh, there, there's going to be a Pentecost. But again, the difference yeah. is the two Pentecosts that was main thing that uh, believers should be concerned about is from the Old Testament and the New Testament. Okay, okay. Because the Pentecost at there was for a purpose to lead us in righteous living. Prior to that, Pentecost was just where they would come and they would do for their, their, their sins or give because of or being mailed or or uh, men would come and give a feast of the, you know, a festival feast because they were men and they gave up what they had to give. But it was always an, an outward thing. It was nothing to enhance the inner part of man. Ten Commandments was to enhance the inner part of man. But the eyes could not, could only read it and could not really conceive it where it can come in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes, even now, sometimes it's hard because of uh, not having the, the, the faith to believe, to digest what you read, to understand that you believe what you read and you function on what you read and you believe it and it comes to pass. Yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even now we have problems if we read some things in the Bible uh, even though God said it, we begin to uh, uh, doubt that God said this. Or even when it comes to Pentecost, yes, sir. You have some churches, you have some the denominations, and I don't understand that that won't go into the New Testament, and they don't believe in the Holy Spirit. Uh, but they got a Bible. How is it you have a Bible and you you only believe 
Uh, so that's, that's telling you that they don't operate up under the power of the Holy Spirit. That's right. And so therefore, more there are more unlearned individuals in the body of Christ than there are out in the world. Yes. Now that's the truth right there. Yes. That's true. My Lord. How can you have 66 books and you only believe 24 of the books? So, 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 My so, 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 here we are, here we are, and I understand, are you all getting this? Yes, yes sir. Yes. Yes. Be, because, because I, I believe where we are now and where the Lord is, wants us to go because we should have a great appreciation for Pentecost when it comes around. Because Pentecost is supposed to open up the door for miracles. And even yes. though, and I heard, I heard co-pastor say, here, uh, we have Pentecost like, ooh, man, every what? Sunday. Every Sunday. Yes. Yes. I can't hear nobody. Yeah, yeah. See, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. When you understand what P Pentecost represents, yeah, yeah, that's it. once that's the Holy it. Spirit is coming, it, it's here. It's here. Yeah. So, we're, so we're moving in. But there's a celebratory part when the Passover, right, after right. 50 days that we acknowledge and we're grateful because Pentecost is here, and we understand our gratefulness, and we understand we should have a great appreciation, and there should be. Now, if you and I was thinking about it, I said, "Well, Lord, well, this is Pentecost, and it seems like if people understood, and if the Word truly got out what Pentecost is about, churches should be filled that have the Holy Ghost because people should be coming up to get healed from right. diseases." Uh, those that need miracles, if they understood what Pentecost was all about. This is when you, the day you should come. Hallelujah. Because it's like a day. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's a birthday for the birth of the church yes, with the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. Because it was the assembly of the saints. Not the assembly of the saints were gathering together. It was the assembly of the saints in the upper room. Because why did it happen? They were all on one accord. They believed in what Jesus had taught them. So they had no other reason, there was no excuse other than the Holy Spirit to come down upon them. So, so where we are now, where we are now, it's amazing because I was asking, I was saying, well, Lord, where, he said, well, well they, they, they uh, let them know that they got this thing twisted now. They, they made my, my uh, Pentecost, uh, and it says uh, they're fornicating Pentecost. Because it, it's not, Pentecost is not, they, they, when you hear now, and I'm, you know, people put their little stuff on their little Facebook and whatever, the other little things, social media, and they're saying what, they come from a convocation, they're not talking about uh, things that took place as far as miracles or, or uh, things of that, and they're talking about superficial stuff. They talk more about superficial stuff than the move of God on you know, Pentecost. They talk about, well, did you see what's the name had this outfit and then we had the, the, the hat section going on. And the, My God. Amen. Yeah. The hat section. <laughs> and everybody want to come up in white, but you got so many black hearts in there, nothing's happening. It makes no difference what you dress up on the outside when the inside is not trying to live a righteous life. Pentecost is only effective when a righteous person is coming in the presence of God. And they have God has something to work with because the heart is the heart has anticipation. My God. But when the heart isn't right and there's no uh, anticipation for the Holy Spirit, to come, Lord, I, 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 I know who you are. Uh, Lord, do this for your people. Show up and show out, God. Yeah. Because we're here celebrating you and for what you've done on your ascension. Yes, yes, yes. And you allow the Holy yes. Spirit to come down where we can mm, now understand, Lord, that you've given us the gift of tongues. But not only that, miracle signs. Of there were 3,000 yes. souls uh, when yes. Peter began to speak. Peter gave his first sermon, huh? Glory to God. Now, so if, if, if Pentecost, if that happened on Peter's first sermon, 3,000 was saved, uh, the altar should be running over. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Hallelujah. But because when we when we when we have the when we have the celebration of Pentecost, and it should be a celebration, we're not talking the right stuff. Amen. We're not talking the right stuff that will prick and evoke, it should evoke 
Ah, uh, the believer's heart. It should Bring be God. Pray. The sinner man to say, hey, look, God is doing this for a gift for you. You're praying that you want a way out, a way of escape. Now, God is presenting this for you because you must understand the reason for the Ten Commandments to show you this is what's required for righteous living. This is what's required to get you out of that bondage, to get your mind right, to get you from doing this little simple thing that you've been doing uh, like the half of your life. This is why I've allowed this to happen. Jesus! And the same thing for now, 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 when the Holy Spirit comes. If you want, he's I give it liberally to them that ask for it. Uh -huh. Many don't ask for it because they're afraid of it. Because all oh, y'all understand yeah. what's on the end that is not wrong. Yeah. Yeah. You're not asking for it because your insides aren't right. And you know you can't fool, you can't play. Ah, the enemy is not crazy. He understands the power of the Holy Ghost. Ah, the enemy is not crazy for the wages of sin is death. The enemy is not crazy because he understands there's only so far that he will go. He's not going to mm. understand everybody just walking in, the, walking through that building is not of the church. Jesus. So he says that these things that you that you have, you're, you're heavy laden. You yeah, you have these burdens upon you. Ah, Pentecost is the day. I mean, there's no other day to get you started to understand. Because when you're in the midst of the saints, those that believe, we're on one accord. And if you believe what they say that they have, they have it wholeheartedly. God will begin to write that thing upon your heart. God will begin to change that thing. When you surrender your heart, until all you got to do is walk in with the surrender. It doesn't matter what you look like what people say about you. See, it does not matter what man thinks about you. It does not matter what people talked about you. How they discarded you. It does not matter because you have no father, no mother, but you got Jesus. Oh, you have a heavenly father and say, if you would be my people, I would be your God. So, Pentecost, I should be the most celebrated for the body for the body of believers. Uh, uh, just like uh, we rush in, see if we understood, like we rush in on Mother's Day and on Easter. Pentecost should be up top, one of the top three. I, I can't hear nobody. On well, the day of Pentecost, it should be filled because if you understand what was waiting for you, uh, the possibilities are endless. Uh, all you got to do is walk in and surrender yourself and believe, Lord. I, I don't have all this. I don't have riches and gold, but such as I have, oh Lord, I give it unto you because I believe. God, all it takes is faith of a mustard seed. Just believe that he will deliver give you what he said he's going to give you. Because that's the time for miracles, God, signs, and wonders. For oh, the Pentecost purpose, huh? Was for righteous living when you read and understand the history of huh? Pentecost for the church and where it was because the church because it was the birth of so the assembly of one and it started with the uh, uh, the uh, disciples the apostles were in the upper room and everyone on the outside also received uh, they received because they believed mm. And then, then, then it says in the book of Joel, he said, in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Yes. Oh, yes. Your sons and your daughters. But understand, understand. I say, well, Lord, uh, you're just going to point say, no, even then I have conditions. Even then I have conditions. Don't get it twisted. I, I have never just wasted my word on anybody. Uh, in the last day, I said it in the last day. But if you know who I am, you know my characteristics, I still have conditions. So from the last day, I shall pour out my spirit on them that are living right, them that are sick in me. Uh, for your sons and your daughters, I, I'm just not going to waste who I am. On a defiled temple. You must understand. See, everything God doesn't say, but if you understand the characteristics of the God that you serve, you know He's just not going to pour His Spirit out on your life and you're not even trying to live holy. See, if we're going to teach God's people, we're going to talk about it. we got to talk about it in truth. God is not going to waste it. He's not going to waste who he is uh, upon undeserving. Uh, 
And you have to be so you have to be so careful. You have to be so careful because in the last days, and that's how many people are deceived because some of people will come out from that one from the other one. Now, you do what your father has told you, which is the devil to do. Now, and the enemy knows how to prophesy. That's what twists so many people in the body of Christ up because they don't know how to distinguish, huh? There's no working. Why? Because you don't have eyes. The Holy Ghost is not upon you, son. That will give you understanding and will tell you that is not me. And that's why so many are being deceived because they think our people throw that scripture from Joel. On the last day, the Lord will pour out his spirit on all flesh. Wow. And they come and they tell that to you, and you think, oh, the Lord has done this for him in Egypt. No, 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 no. There are still conditions. Help me, Holy Ghost. There are still conditions that are required for living. Speak the truth. Speak the truth. What he said in the Old Testament is also applies and is applicable for the New Testament. And in this new dispensation, on the last days, he shall pour out his spirit. For those with in their heart, ah, ah, you've allowed them to write on your heart ah, yes. because we are the epistles. Yes. We're walking epistles. God's supposed to be writing uh, according to how we're living, and people supposed to see how we're living according to uh, what we believe God is writing upon your frame, upon your framework, who you are, ah, ah, and you're being convicted. So therefore, your old ways, ah, ah, you say I can't do this anymore because I'm. Old. I'm not that same person anymore, so I no longer do what I used to do. God is changing things on you now because he's rewriting your story. Uh, they said they say it's about you, but God said, no, 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 no. I'm rewriting this story. No, 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 no. You know them, but I know them as this. I am not. What you know is not what I knew. Uh, because I knew them before they were born and there was a woman. So that individual you know is not who I knew. Ever change and I should always want to be changing. God use me, write on me, God. I'm not gonna accept this because you said I don't have to accept it. So God said, okay, because you understand. Uh, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are cast away, behold, all things are new. Uh, so you worried about speaking in tongues, don't worry about the tongues. Uh, just continue in the righteous living. Uh, the tongues will come. Uh, See, you gotta move this thing out of here. I gotta replace it with this here. And I'm still writing on you. But don't be discouraged. Uh, be courageous in what you're doing. Be strong, be courageous. Cause I'm still writing on you. I'm still writing on you.
work is a Pentecost. It's a reason to celebrate. It's a reason to celebrate. from God are opened up to you. Don't don't just get fixated on Acts 2. Understand it happened in the Old Testament. So God had a purpose. God had a plan. God had a purpose. He knew exactly what was going to happen. Just like he knew what the second was a purpose. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's only two Pentecosts for purpose. Jesus. The Old and the New Testament. Yes, but it was for a rebirthing. Yes, it was for a rebirthing for the Israelites to encourage them because they were up under 400 years of slavery. Yes, they were depressed people. That's 400 years. They were depressed. God had to rebirth them. There had to be a rebirth. So then when the Holy Spirit came, there was a rebirth in us. You must understand now because I, I know there was a rebirth in for us now for the church because that was the beginning of the church. had to be reborn to understand now. You don't no longer walk like the world huh? because of who you are. No longer do you have to put up what, what the world says because of who you are. So therefore, I have to have a, I have to have a place. I have to have something set so you can reference back to this is your birthday house. This is your birthday for the church. This is when I introduce the Holy Spirit, which I promise that the Paraclete will come down to assist you. Because we all, we must understand that God always needs a witness. There has to be a witness. I always need a witness in his word. There has to be a witness. I, I, you must understand you're the witness. That now I'm not, Jesus is not here, but I am. You must be a witness that the Holy Ghost is real because he's really me. You must understand when they say no, the Holy Ghost, no, no, no. You don't know. The Holy Ghost is real.
when the spirit went unto the father, a voice came out of heaven and said, this is my son. Descended down to those that were around Christ. Heard was being said. A dove was released. That's right. And the dove. Yeah. 